What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and here it is, just like I said, another 50 hidden features and changes in iOS 10 that Apple didn't necessarily make very apparent at their event. And I promise you guys, there will be several you don't know about, and this is for the people that scoured the internet for all the changes. There are some in here that I found personally that I couldn't find anywhere else. Anyways, let me show you how iOS 10 has changed in the smallest ways. So one of the simplest but coolest little things about iOS 10 is the fact that the animations have changed. So this is the old one, this is the new one. I mean, it's really, really cool just how springy it is. Apps feel like they're more alive when you open them, but I gotta say right now it is slower than the current one used in iOS 9. Not only the animation for opening apps, but also for opening folders as well. The font on the lock screen is now bolder, so it stands out a little bit more, not as minimalistic, but hey, it is easier to read, I'd say. Now, iOS 10 will tell you if an app is not optimized fully for iOS 10 or 64-bit performance after downloading it from the App Store. The ironic thing is that this is Apple's own remote application and it's not optimized just yet. Now, a change I would have been better off without, but there are now ads in the App Store. So you'll search and here is your main result that you're looking for, right? Well, up here is now an ad that developers can pay for to have placed above the search results. Now, when deleting an app in iOS 10, the annoying thing is that the buttons have swapped, so I find myself clicking cancel when I got used to it being delete, and yeah, pretty much just swapped buttons right here. Also, same thing goes for photos, so all photos has been swapped with the camera and done. So you guys know that feature in iOS 10 that you could supposedly delete apps? Well, let me show you why it's a fraud. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove maps, right? We're gonna disable any internet connection, and I'm gonna go into the App Store. And with maps already searched for, let me go ahead and select download and without any internet connection or anything, hey, it's suddenly downloaded in less than a second. So truly, these apps are never actually deleted. They're actually just hidden from sight. So something very cool of Apple to do, there are color filters in iOS 10. The purpose of these is basically to make your device, you know, the colors different to accommodate for different types of color blindness. Today I learned. Another new feature in accessibility is the magnifier. So with a triple click, you can go ahead and magnify things on your display quickly using this slider right here. So it's like having a magnifying glass in your pocket through your iPhone. So you guys know assistive touch, right? Well, something pretty cool about it is that now you can 3D touch on the little circle and it acts as a home button. Of course, you could have done this before by removing everything else but the home button, but hey, 3D touch on assistive touch is actually pretty cool. iOS 10 now has alerts that specifically tells you when you've left the range of the Wi-Fi you were using. So you'll get this little exclamation mark inside of your Wi-Fi logo in settings. And when connecting to an unsecured network, iOS 10 will now give you a warning basically telling you that it is not a good idea to do so and that you should definitely be connecting to a network that is secured. Siri will now give you a list of mispronunciations that you can correct if you go ahead and edit the text you gave to her. So now, basically a huge list of things I could have said and I can correct her easily in here. A very welcome change is that the Photos app on iOS 10 opens up much faster every single time, even with a larger library. A new feature in Safari, to close all tabs, just hold the tab button and select close four tabs or however many you had. Side-by-side -side tabs in Safari on iPad. Apple mentioned this, but they didn't show us how to do it and it's actually so cool. So actually to do it, just hold the tab view and select open split view. So now you can go ahead and split up web browser tabs like that and you can go ahead and multitask much better using this new feature. It is awesome. In the privacy settings and settings, there is a new tab for speech recognition. However, it's a bit empty right now. There is a new tab in general settings on iOS 10 for dictionary. So in here, you can go ahead and select which one you wanna use and there's a lot to choose from. Now, instead of being located in general, Siri settings have been relocated and given its own individual tab on the main page with a new icon right here. And instead of being all combined, mail, contacts, and calendars, they all individually have their own tab now. So this is actually really, really cool, very useful widgets for 3D touch on iOS. I don't know how I didn't see this earlier, but they are available for many applications right away. This is basically for Apple's stock applications. Not all of them have them, but I'm sure many will get them and they do different things on different apps. It's certainly very, very cool to get a little prediction, little widgets. Also, every single third-party app has a 3D touch now, whether or not it came with it to begin with. So let's try Geekbench, nothing on iOS 9. Well, now on iOS 10, you have a share tab for third-party apps where you can go ahead and share the app with other people. New in iOS 10, when downloading an app, you can go ahead and 3D touch on the downloaded app to go ahead and pause it, cancel it, 
and share, of course. New in the email application, you can now filter email by several categories. So just click on this little button on the bottom left and go ahead and select filter. And now you can filter by these options right here from VIP with attachments, good stuff. The attachment sheet for messages is so much better in iOS 10. So from in here, you can quickly take a photo. The camera is already activated and ready to go. You can swap it by double tapping to live photos. And in general, it's just a lot easier to use now. Looking up words in iOS 10 is certainly much better. So in here, you automatically get web links just presented to you, where instead on iOS 9, it was just a little bit lackluster. Now, if your device receives a message from an unknown number, iOS 10 will actually give you a prediction of who it might be based on you know previous encounters anywhere it may have seen that number. Now, this isn't new in iOS 9, this was available only for phone calls. Now this feature has been implemented in messages as well. iMessages in iOS 10 will scan the contents of your messages and set up calendar events that are appropriate to that message. So for example, someone asks me to go ahead and walk the dog, set up an event already to be used right here. Now we know that iOS 10 has the really cool messages feature with the backgrounds and everything, but there are automatic presets. So if you send someone just a happy birthday, it'll automatically add all that stuff to the background. So we get the balloons floating up just like that, or happy new year, same thing, but with fireworks, just like that. So I'm going to put my device in recovery mode just to show you this little change on the recovery page. But if your device is ever in recovery mode, now it will have an option for you to go ahead and visit support page from Apple right there, which it previously did not. New in iOS 10, you can go ahead and export a web page to PDF, something a lot of people have been asking Apple to do. So go ahead and quickly select print option. And now zoom in on the photo and here it is in a format of a text document. You can go ahead and use a third party extension to go ahead and export it as PDF right here. And I really like this one. The contacts app has got a really fresh redesign. So it's very minimalistic. All of your options right here for quick access. It definitely looks a lot better than the iOS 9 one. Spotlight search now stores history. So whatever you searched for will now appear down here. Previously something that was missing from iOS 9. The health app has received a huge refresh in the looks department. So it looks very clean now, very subtle, but at the same time providing your information in a very clean and concise way. Now, if you're playing music from an app that is not Apple Music, a new feature in the control center, if you actually close that app out and you wanna go ahead and resume playing from that app, you can do so here. It'll remember what app was playing last. Unfortunately, it won't go right to where you were listening to, but hey, at the same time, it's a great feature to have. So that's the music app on the iPad in iOS 9. This is the new one in iOS 10. It's very nice. The corners are all rounded. The controls down here are much easier to access. I absolutely love the new interface of it. But not only does it look cleaner, Apple has actually brought over Split View to Music App as well. So now you can go ahead and multitask while browsing through your music library over here. Really good stuff. So the music controls on the lock screen and in general everywhere are huge. I mean, seriously, they just pop. They're definitely easy to use. And I love what Apple's done. So my complaint with iOS 9 was that the spacing was too close together. They certainly split it up over here between the controls and iOS 10. And of course, I wanted to show this one to you guys. So how lyrics works in iOS 10 in the song that you're playing, basically just scroll down. And if lyrics are available, you can see them right here. So while you're listening, it's a very, very clean interface. I love it. And new to Apple Music, you can now dislike songs in this menu right here. So it'll filter your preferences based on the songs you like and dislike. And Apple Music now has automatic downloads in its settings. So whenever you add a song to your library, it will automatically download it for offline use. And I never showed you guys this in part one, but you can search your entire library for a song subject, a place, just using the new search function in photos. So let's say I want to find cheese. Photos will scan my entire library and give me results just based on what I ask for. Let's say I want to search for a cow. Boom. It just found one for my entire library. And I thought I'd throw this in here because it was such a useful bug, but Apple finally patched that feature that we used in order to go ahead and get more storage back. So it no longer works. There's basically just a prompt that you cannot download it but there is an option to go ahead and stream this online as well if you choose so in the settings. And there's a new notes collaboration feature when signed into iCloud for notes, you can go ahead and collaborate with people around you using this so updates to the notes will happen in real time. And when taking bursts in the photos application, the text is a lot smaller. Don't know why Apple would do that, but there it is. And in iOS 10, using that new awesome alarm clock feature, you can actually change the volume of individual alarms. So you can start out with a very quiet one and then work your way up 
you know, the harder it is for you to wake up. And something I missed entirely in iOS 10, the stopwatch now has a new face. So an analog clock stopwatch, which actually works really well and it looks really cool. And the passbook interface is slightly changed in iOS 10. So in the back of it, it'll actually be a little bit different and to delete it instead of doing it up here, there's an option right there. And something I absolutely wanted to mention, so a developer earlier actually found a hidden dark mode in the settings of iOS 10. So if the clock is anything to go by, iOS 10 might actually have a dark mode by the time it releases. I mean, it's found in the code, the clock app is already dark, there is so much pointing to it finally happening and hopefully it does. And if your Apple Watch is running watchOS 3, then you will now get a new feature called Face Gallery where you can go ahead and customize clock faces, choose between them, save them, have them at ready to be able to change on the Apple Watch. And it's actually pretty useful. So guys, there it is. Those are 50 more secret and hidden features in iOS 10. You know, some of them you may have heard of, but hopefully you learned a few new ones. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, I'll have more videos for you guys soon. Peace.